What's going on everybody, this is Dilbert and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I had the pleasure to meet the team behind the next mind brain computer interface. We talked about BCI as it relates to the future of external reality. Also, what kind of use cases can we solve today with BCI? What can we solve tomorrow? What kind of technologies are comparable to BCI? And also, what kind of level of development skills do you need in order for you to start developing with BCI? So, I want to invite you to an interview that I did with them today, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did making it. Uh, why are you so passionate about XR? And why did you teach XR development? Getting into extended reality was uh, one of those things that I, I didn't choose. I started teaching game development a couple of years ago, and a lot of, a lot of people in the community know that I love making little games. And it wasn't until Apple actually released a AR kit that I started playing around with AR kit. And I'm like, oh, I can actually have something augmented, you know, through by using AR. And I think you're seeing that you can have another reality and having awareness of another reality, and, you know, now using lighter things like that. I was just too passionate about and, you know, getting into virtual reality to I work for a company called The Void and they put me a VR headset and I, it, it was basically a simulation and they have fans going on. They had the temperature was changing. So I was standing on the top of the mountain by using a VR headset, but I was sitting in a room and like being able to see that extended reality uh, can add to our realities. I think it's, you know, I think it's the future. And I think, you know, I, I wanted to teach that to a lot of people. That's very nice. And I, I definitely can agree with you with like the fact that when you're using the VR headset, it like takes you to a different world. And um, even personally, I've seen experiences where people do sketching with headsets. So for me, it's like, what's next, you know, like, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, since you've been in the VR community for a while, you've probably seen a lot of tech and trends come and go. Uh, what makes PCI so special for XR? Yeah, no, I, I think uh, when I, when you guys reach to me about NextMind, I have already been reading a lot about NextMind and uh, just thinking about use cases such as, you know, people that are disabled, people that can't communicate. I love sci-fi and I know that that is coming. I love like extraterrestrial type things. So uh, I, I think a lot of that might seem like a lot of sci-fi, but I think, I think that's the future. Like if we can use you know, how we went from talking on the phone most of the time to then texting. Uh, a lot of people see that with a with kind of like a negative thing, but I mean, we're, we're in such a, in a world that is moving so fast. So I can see BCI for, you know, being able to communicate more that we, you know, that we're normally doing. So it's, it's amazing that you can, you know, you, you can read the mind and then, and then be able to transfer that to the, to the screen, like being able to turn on the TV, being able to, you know, you know, talk to somebody all, all, all around you without actually communicating. I think I'm really excited about that. Yeah, for sure. And since you mentioned that you've already heard about NextMind and you see like the development of like going from your phone to like texting, did you see BCI something that was coming or is it the first time that you use a BCI? Yeah, I think I think BCI to be honest, BCI when I when I when I read about it, and you might think that I uh, I am and I am technical, but BCI for me was like like way far in the future for me to try because, I mean, the things that we know is you have all those sensors all around your head like like mold. I'm like I don't know that it's gonna be that easy to jump into it, mm -hmm. and especially with me with time. Like I want to make sure that I can create a video, bring it to the community, and the BCI that I know it seemed very complicated. But when I start playing with the one that you guys offer, I'm like, oh, this is this is really a thing that I can offer to the community that they can experiment with very fast. So you think that now that you've experienced NextMind, you can definitely see like this new world like opening up and like how it's like coming very soon. Yeah, no, I, I think my head uh, started spinning around when I mean, just just by getting a confidence value, uh, and I know that we're, we're, we we will talk about some other things in eye tracking, but just being able to get a confidence value and being able to to go through a calibration process and and know that I can use those values in in so many different use cases, like and you guys make it so easy because it was just drag and drop components. So I, I am really excited about BCI. I didn't see it before, but now with, 
like I said, with the usability of it, and then also how light it is on, on the back and, uh, you know, being able to use it with the Oculus Quest, it's, it's also, I think, a great thing because uh, you're not really tied to only VR, but you can also use it for, you know, for daily people that don't use, don't, they're not into VR, but we can slowly get him into VR. Yeah, for sure. Um, and since you mentioned eye tracking, um, a lot of headsets are starting to integrate it. Um, and you're probably familiar with them. Can you describe the difference that you felt like between using eye tracking versus uh, the VCI with NextMind? Yeah, that that is uh, that's interesting because I had a few people comment that and they're like, "Well, why don't you just use eye tracking? That that's the same thing." And and I mean, at first when I jump in, I'm like, "Yeah, to a certain point, it can it can do similar things." But as I started using it more and more, uh, eye tracking to me was more more direct. It was, you know, you're looking at something and then you know it's basically focused on that specific game object, on that area. With the next mine, I felt like I had to, it was more of a, you know, you had to concentrate. You're, you're basically, uh, the, the more you concentrate, the more that you look at an item, it just feels more more organic versus something that, you know, it's just a point right at a specific place. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't like the technicality of it. I read a couple articles about it, but to me, I felt that it was more immersed to use the, you know, BCI versus use eye tracking. That's awesome. So you, you feel like eye tracking is more passive and uh, devices active? I, I felt like the I, I felt like the, the the solution that you guys offers it, it feels like it's more like active. Like it, it, I felt like it was more accurate in many times. I also I, I, I really like and you know getting into the SDK that. I was able to get a confidence value versus, you know, if I'm using eye tracking, it's just at number one. If I'm using, if I have a confidence value, there's a lot more experiences that I can build with getting a confidence value into Unity that I could, if I just get right, true or false, I'm looking at that. And then like the on release, the on trigger, I think it gives me a lot more granularity over what I can do in games versus what I can, you know, could do with eye tracking. Do you think BCI tech will be used going forward in XR? Do you have any ideas or like potential use yeah. cases, or um, have you thought about what's the future for this? Yeah, no, I, I have a list of ideas, and a lot of these ideas came from you, you know being able to try the technology and, and being able to make videos. So when I when when we get when we guys talk and like, okay, what kind of video can I make? What kind of cool? And you know, one of them was uh, the the BCI with with locomotion. So next mine with locomotion was was one of them that I thought was interesting. And I I mean that, that is in the game one interesting use case, just being able to look at different areas and and control the movement on a headset uh, based on you know how much you focus. Uh, I also thought about using BCI for, you know, simple UI interfaces. I mean, you look at Minority Report and the guy is like moving around and selecting different menus. And I mean, a lot of those the experiences are using hands. Like I, I think BCI could also play a big role into, you know, helping with user interfaces and especially with people, you know, that, that need help with that kind of thing. Uh, uh, I think, and, and, I, and I would mention this, I mentioned this before about, it's not only for disabled people, but people that can talk, people that, you know, I mean, don't have hands, like you're giving them hands, you're giving them all the, all the tools that they don't have right now. So I think that is, uh, to me, that is a huge win as well. So do you definitely see BCI and XR merging at some point in the future? Yeah, I think, I mean, I I can see how I mean how we're integrating right now eye tracking into a lot of devices. Hololens too has eye tracking built in. It's it's pretty powerful. You know the the many devices have it, and and right now I, I see it as an accessory. And when you guys ask that question, I'm like, yeah, that it's going to be something that is part of the device at some point. I want you guys to be in business, but I want you guys to be, you know, the that it's your technology that is incorporated into. You know, Oculus devices into you know many different of the Vive devices. So yeah, absolutely, I see that merging at some point. So yes, I have a second list of questions, and the first one is tell us a bit about how the experience when 
went uh, for you when you started playing with the SDK? And did you get started right with the bat? Did you play with simple scenes, watch tutorials, etc.? Yeah, getting started into your SDK, uh, I'm going to be honest, I was really scared. <laughs> but I'm scared about many things when it comes to, uh, as a developer, we're, we're all like that, right? Like at the beginning, it's like, whoa, this is all this new thing. And then you add BCI to it, and it's a little bit more scary. But then, yeah, I, I, I went into your your website, you know, went into developer, uh, I look at your uh, SDK, I downloaded it. Uh, I mean, you guys have everything set up in a way that I was able to just follow the step-by-step, -step, uh, you know, instructions, downloaded it, uh, got it up and running in Unity in, I mean, less than five minutes. Then I just needed to know how to use the device, how to connect it, how to calibrate it, and the the walkthrough of the calibration process basically tells you what to do and so it was really easy to 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 get into the you know the device so i think for beginners like it, the, there's not really a much of a challenge other than you know getting to know unity and then once they know unity it's you know following the instructions on the developer area is developing for excel with the next mind tech uh, doable for beginners even if they are new to unity and what would be the biggest challenge starting out? Is XR Next Mind doable for beginners? Uh, you know, definitely it's doable for beginners. The the biggest challenge that I found when getting into Next Mind and just putting myself on the beginner shoes is, you know, like I said, make sure that you are familiar with Unity. So get it, getting getting an introduction to Unity, either by looking at my videos or by looking at Unity Learn. It will be it will be a big you know a big win because when you jump into next mine, the some of the components that they offer the inspector options the neuro tag the mono behavior, some of that wording you're gonna get if you get into you know the the beginner of Unity first and then jump into next mine. But for the most part, I you know if you have C sharp knowledge, if you get basic C sharp knowledge and you get basic Unity knowledge, I think jumping into next mine it's completely doable for beginners. What's your goal behind making this tutorial series? And what advice do you have for XR developers just starting out? Yeah, what's my goal for making this tutorial series for Next Mind? That is, my goal was, you know, to bring another possibility to extend the reality developers. We, you know, we a lot, a lot of us are just focused so much on specific technologies. And I think the goal for me, you know, in general for the channel, is to offer other possibilities for different use cases. Mm -hmm. So if people are using eye tracking today, or if they're using hand tracking, are there other ways that they can, they can interact with the world in, you know, with BCI? And, and also letting the community know that it's it's not as complicated as, it, as the word sounds, because NextMind made it easier for developers. So that was kind of my goal is a walkthrough the, of the entire process uh, and I'm going to keep experimenting with that. I'm going to keep experimenting with different prototypes so that, you know, this tutorial series becomes something that people go to and, and it can open, you know, more possibilities for, you know, for use cases in the industry. Yeah, I think that I definitely agree with you. And it's like you're opening the door to people that if they don't know about NextMind, learn about the company and also at the same time get inspiration and kind of like start that spark in their head of like what ideas or use cases that they can create. And that's how you get people involved. And like, that's how you get this technology to also evolve. The more people that want to see what's next, will push that forward. So I think it's really um, positive and it's really um, great for you to do these type of tutorials. Like, and obviously for next one, it's really good. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yeah, no, no worries. I think it's, it's like one of those things that you don't see it until you try it. But if I'm trying it and I'm showing it, you're like, then it clicks, right? You're like, oh, BCI, uh, what can I do with BCI? And I think you guys showing me what it was possible through the, you know, example scenes, you know, the walkthrough that you have where you show the TV and you can change the channel. And it's like, it gets you thinking about, oh, I can do, I can do that. And so that was kind of, kind of like the goal is, Okay, what possibilities, uh, what use cases we can solve with using this technology? So I appreciate it. Win-win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a lot of people in your community uh, gi giving you 
examples of what you could do, uh, like uh, new use cases or something? Yeah, I, I normally get, uh, you know, people asking me questions about BCI. There, uh, I, I get questions and also concerns about, well, we can do this with, like I said before, with eye tracking and you can do, but I think it's the education piece, like educating them or what different ways. Uh, so far, I haven't really gotten, I'll have to go back to my comments, uh, mm -hmm. use cases specifically that people want to solve. It's more like, me trying to find those use cases so that they i can open their eyes but i'm sure once people start getting more into the tutorials their brain is going to start generating a lot of different ideas so yeah i think i think that's coming so now let's talk about the, your future after this tutorial series do you have any future projects planned for using nextmind or any bci tech in your development or any other upcoming tutorial series for developers planned yeah, I know that is. So if I have future plans for using Nextmind in my future projects and also in the in the channel, uh, definitely. <laughs> I, I've been thinking about that a lot. I'm going to keep adding more videos, uh, you know, as on my daily, as I get questions from the community. A lot of times, like you asked me before, does the community drive some of the videos, the use cases for Nextmind? Absolutely. And, and I'm sure that BCI will be one of those. One of them that I can think about right now is if you're using your phone and you're using augmented reality. Right now, because we don't have glasses, we have to hold the phone when we're using augmented reality. And the, I can't just, if I want to touch something, I can't just use my hand. I mean, hand tracking is not fully incorporated unless you use third parties. The one cool use case will be to use BCI next mine to, to interact, like, wouldn't that be cool that you can, you know, use augmented reality and still be able to interact with the world by, you know, by using augmented reality. I think that's something that, you know, it's will be interesting for me, just trying how BCI next mind will work with augmented reality. Cause I haven't, I haven't seen anything like that yet. So I think that to me, depending on the first video, uh, as I, as I build it, I, I think I'm going to have I can see I'm going to have a series of videos with augmented reality and BCI. That's so. exciting to hear. Yeah. Yep. Um, and for that series, so you that was something that you would be planning to do or have you started on it or it's something that it's kind of like a, an idea that you have as of now? Yeah, I I keep I normally keep a backlog of ideas. Okay. <laughs> and this one is pretty this one is pretty I normally rank them so BCI uh, so I'll kind of tell you what are some of the, the top ideas for the channel in the future. It's definitely Ocul Oculus Pass-Through API. That's, I'm gonna keep pushing towards that because I think mixed reality, it's, it's what we're gonna be living with in the future. Uh, lighter devices and, you know, just like my watch is useful today, I won't be living without augmented reality glasses in the future. But I think BCI, it's up there too because of you know, the, the easy that, that you can activate things, that you can interact with things. I think I see extended reality and I see BCI, and I also see machine learning and AI, which kind of integrates into what you guys are doing, I'm sure, with BCI. So, so yeah, I, I think uh, I see a lot of future with BCI in my channel, and I'm sure many channels as well, because uh, it's not hidden to anyone that that's going to be used a lot in the future.